Hey everybody, welcome. Uh, today we are going to be discussing a little bit about uh, the AR-15 platform. Uh, we'll go over some of its design features, an overview on how it functions, and uh, we'll start with some of the history behind it and we'll go through what some of the specific components are. Before we get started, uh, I'm Jay. I'm the owner of Liberty Bell Firearms in Bluffton, Indiana. I graduated Sonoran Desert Institute in May of 2018 and uh, it was really good I enjoyed my time there um, I learned a lot it was very valuable and now I'm taking what I have learned from them and am now applying it uh, out with my company so we'll start uh, a brief history over the uh, AR-15 it was designed by Eugene Stoner in 1955 uh, originally, he designed the Armalite uh, AR-10. That's actually what the AR stands for in AR-15 and AR-10, is Armalite Rifle. Uh, after failing to uh, be adopted by the military, he, got a, he was approached and he was asked to scale down the AR-10 down to the smaller uh, 223 uh, cartridge. So Stoner got with uh, Robert Fremont and Jim Sullivan, and they were able to fulfill this request and it was adopted by the military as what we know as the M16. Uh, Armalite later on sold the rights for the AR-15 uh, to Colt. So that's why a lot of people think, uh, when you think AR-15, you think Colt, uh, but it was originally Armalite that was the, the ones who uh, kind of designed and patented it. So when you start with an AR platform, you have two uh, main uh, categories you have the upper and the lower so you have your upper receiver you have your lower receiver and then all the components that go along with it uh, we're going to start by taking a look at the upper and some of its components so the first component we have is our actual upper receiver here that is uh, this machine piece it's typically aluminum there are some polymer ones on the market uh, as well so this houses our bolt carrier group Let me open our dust cover there. So this houses our bolt carrier group as well as our charging handle. The, there are uh, variations of bolt carrier groups and charging handles. You can have multiple different coatings on your bolt carrier ranging from nitride to phosphate, nickel boron. Uh, there's even some newer technologies out there uh, to help it be more slick and more durable. Um, and as well as your charging handle. This rifle here features a Raptor from Radian Weapons. Uh, you also have your, uh, the military has their own uh, mil-spec version which has smaller latches and is also non-ambidextrous. Uh, military also sticks with phosphate coating for the bolt carrier group, which functions uh, phenomenally. However, it may not be as sleek looking as something like a nickel boron or a black nitride. Um, this one specifically is a nitride version in this rifle. Um, within your bolt carrier group, you also have multiple components. You have your bolt, your carrier, you have your firing pin, firing pin retaining pin, uh, those kinds of things. So all of those are housed within your bolt carrier group. The next biggest thing that we're going to have on the um, in the upper receiver is going to be our our handguards and our barrels. This one here features a 15 inch free float handguard. So when we're talking about a barrel, uh, with the AR, AR platform, there are many different lengths of barrels, as well as many different calibers that you can get in the AR-15 platform. Um, there's also the AR-10 platform, which uh, deals with some larger calibers, uh, but specifically for this video, we're gonna stick with the AR-15. The most common caliber you'll find in an AR-15 pattern is the 556 or 223. Uh, 556 and 223 are not necessarily the same, they're very similar, but that is a topic for another video. Other calibers you can get in your AR-15 uh, pattern are the 300 Blackout, 6.5 Grendel, 22 Nosler, uh, 224 Valkyrie. Uh, most recently, uh, Hornady on, uh, released a new cartridge called the 6mm Advanced Rifle Cartridge, or 6mm ARC, that is also works uh, in the AR-15 as well. Each barrel will have a specific gas system length, 
and this is the link from where your gas port is to uh, where your upper receiver is. So your four most common gas system links uh, from shortest to longest are pistol, carbine, mid, and rifle. Um, the length of the barrel does play a factor in the gas system. However, just because a barrel is a specific length doesn't mean it will have a specific gas system length. A great example of this is for a 16 inch 556 barrel like the one we have in front of us. You can get a mid length gas, which is what this one is, or you can get a carbine length gas, which is a little bit shorter. Uh, your pistol length gas are typically, for your 556 calibers, are typically um, more on like your 7.5 inch barrels. Uh, your 10 and a halfs and 11 and a halfs to usually feature a carbine length gas system. Um, for a 16 inch mid gas seems to be the most common, seems to be the best way to go. You get a lighter recoil impulse, you get a little bit less wear and tear on your bolt carrier and all those kinds of things. Um, we will get into details on how the rifle functions here in just a minute. Uh, but for now, we will go on um, to explaining some different components. What you see here is your gas tube. Here's your gas block. The gas block is what interfaces in to your barrel with your gas port. And then your uh, gas tube is what actually directs that gas and drives your carrier. Again, we'll get a little bit more detailed here in just a minute. And then on the end here, we have a muzzle device. Uh, these come in all different shapes and sizes, different manufacturers, different lengths. Uh, you can get uh, direct thread suppressors that will fit um, depending upon the threading, like 300 Blackout is 5 8 by 24 thread. 556 five, barrels are typically half by 28 thread. Um, so many different companies, so many different muzzle devices, and ultimately what's <clears throat> What is best for you will be dependent upon what your purpose of the rifle is. Do you need a flash hider to uh, eliminate that flash and hide your position potentially? Or do you need a muzzle brake, something to compensate and make that recoil, uh, that felt recoil be a lot less? Moving on to our lower receiver, that is this piece right here. The lower receiver is what is actually considered the firearm as far as ATF, the, uh, ATF's definition. So if you buy a lower receiver, whether it be attached as a complete firearm or whether it be just a stripped lower receiver by itself, that is where you'll have to undergo a background check and fill out a form 4473 uh, in order to purchase one of those. Uh, within the lower receiver, you have um, your pivot pin, and your takedown pin, which is what allows you to uh, open the rifle up, take out your bolt carrier group, clean it, inspect it, those kinds of things. Uh, we also have our mag release is over here on this side, which is what drops our magazine. And then on the left side here where you can't see, this is your uh, bolt catch bolt release. We have our safety selector on the left side as well. You can get ambidextrous safety selectors where you would have a lever here on the right hand side in order to operate that safety. And then, of course, we have the trigger mechanism as well. Triggers, again, just like barrels and muzzle devices and charging handles, uh, come in all different shapes and sizes. You can get flat triggers, you can get lightning triggers, you can get heavy triggers, uh, mil-spec triggers, or you can do two-stage triggers or single-stage triggers. Um, there is a lot that goes into um, selecting those things, and it really is based upon what do you, as an individual, what do you need it for, and what are you after? The other part of our lower receiver is our buffer tube, it is also called the receiver extension. So if you hear either or, um, then you will uh, you'll know what uh, what is being talked about. Then on the end we have our stock. You'll also see uh, pistol braces as well for the uh, shorter barreled ones that are, those are considered pistols, not rifles. So they will have um, pistol braces typically made by SB Tactical. Uh, if you want to, you can register your rifle under the National Firearms Act, put a stock on your short barrel rifle, your short barrel AR, and it will become a short barrel rifle. 
let's get into function. How does the gun work? What happens? What is the sequence of events when it comes to firing? Uh, the first thing would be you load a magazine. Here, this uh, magazine block is from Mag Magpul. Great tool, phenomenal. I love using these to put uh, rifles together. Your magazine goes in. When you need to load a round, you will pull your charging handle and then you will let it go. At that point, you have a round in the chamber and you are ready to fire. You flip your safety selector, which is on the left side in this video. You flip your selector to fire, and you pull the trigger. When you pull the trigger, your hammer contacts your firing pin within your bolt carrier group. Your firing pin uh, strikes your primer, uh, ignites your powder, and the bullet travels down the barrel with all that gas and propellant behind the bullet. When you get when that powder and propellant gets to here, there is a small hole in the top of the barrel. Let me grab one here to show you. There is a hole, right there, a very small hole in the top of the barrel that allows the gas to go up through your gas block into your gas tube. That gas travels down the gas tube and drives our carrier backwards. So as our carrier comes back, I'm gonna lock it open. As our carrier comes back into our receiver extension, there is a spring, which is called the buffer spring. And then there is a buffer. There is a buffer and a spring inside of this tube. So our carrier comes back and it ejects our spent casing. And then the spring from our buffer causes our bolt to come back forward, picks up the next round, loads the next round into the chamber, and now we are ready to fire again. And we will repeat this process until our magazine is empty. Upon an empty magazine, the uh, I'll lock it open again. It will automatically lock open on our last round. At that point, we'll drop our magazine. We'll punch in a new magazine. And then on the left side over here, we will hit our bolt release and send our bolt back into battery. Just like that. There are a lot of features when it comes to the AR platform. There are a lot of things you can do. There's a lot of components that go into it. And um, there's a lot of companies making a lot of different products. What you have to determine is what you as the shooter want. What are you trying to do with it? What is your purpose for the rifle? And how much do you want to spend? You can spend a few thousand dollars on an AR-15, or you can spend a few hundred and anywhere in between. Um, hopefully this video has been of some help to you as far as uh, some of the components, some of the pieces that go into it, as well as um, what to look for. Uh, there's a lot of things to look for when it comes to selecting an AR.